Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're down in Cape Canaveral, uh, Cocoa Beach area, putting in a drainage system. And if you take a look, you can see we're inside of a courtyard. And four walls surround this courtyard. You can see the downspout drains coming down. They're coming down on all sides. That water comes down into the courtyard and basically just floods. Also, just rainwater drops down in here. It has no place to go. It has to flood and go out through that breezeway. But what it's doing is it's causing problems along the footer and water is entering the units on both sides. So we've left an estimate to replace and put in new footer pipe along here costly so instead we're going to go ahead and put downspout drains you can see the downspout in the corner behind that palm line is going to come down trench all the way over back to where chuck is and some pump will be down there we'll also put some catch basins here in addition to hooking up the downspout drains as well to collect this water and then the pump will lift it up and send it out so we have a couple of sidewalks to tunnel and real simple to do, especially in sand. The best way to tunnel, you dig a trench to the, to the sidewalk so you can get your shovel down in here. But the secret is to scrape at the top of the concrete, scrape it to the top, pull it down, then you pull it out. It comes out pretty quick. We also have a power line right here, but it's not really in the way. So you pull a little bit out the top and get a shovel full and get rid of it real quick again pretty easy in the sand but it's the same even if it's clay works exactly the same remember to scrape at the top I'm just gonna let that camera run so you can see how quick this is. And I believe that we're through. Yep. <clears throat> so you can see we've come right through. Took all of, I don't know, two minutes. Took about two minutes to get through there. We've got three of these to do and we'll keep on going. So Chuck's digging the inlet line over to the sump basin. You can see it right over there in the corner. And sometimes you're gonna come across obstacles. You can see the electric line there. We've also got an old tree stump here. This is actually petrified. It's been out here 20, 30 years. So they kind of want to leave it. It looks like driftwood, but Whatever you got to do, you got to do. If you find an electric line in a conduit, that's great because you can lift it up and move it around. Not a problem. We can put our pipe right underneath of there. There is a T right there. There's a downspout drain coming across here as well, but shouldn't be a problem. Okay, it's time to set up our sump basin. And the sump basin comes with two nipples. And they're usually at the right depth. If not, you can always drill a four inch hole to accept your inlet coming your inlet line coming in real simple good sharp hacksaw cut that right off and this is going to be where all of the water that we've collected comes in so we call this the inlet line now we're going to set up the sump pump we're going to use a zoller We're using a Zoller M98, it's a half horsepower pump. This pump is extremely powerful. Pushes about 60 to 80 gallons per minute, which is you know a couple of trash cans of water every minute. It's gonna lift that water up and send it out. Very powerful pump. To set that up, 
This pump's heavy. It weighs about 35 to 40 pounds. Sets up pretty quick. It's got a port right here with threads. This is the, the, dis this is the discharge of the pump. We're going to start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter. And we screw this in here hand tight. As tight as we can make that with our hand. Next, we're going to put a small riser on here, which will accept our check valve. In the riser, before the check valve, you need to drill a 3 16th inch hole. I already drilled that. We're going to put this in here. We're going to glue this piece up. We just want to get it up here by the protection of the bar. This bar protects the float. As the float comes up and down, that just protects it, makes sure it stays in place. So we're going to go ahead and glue that up. Good PVC cement. We're going to go ahead and glue both pieces, the riser and the adapter. Stick that in there, twist it a little bit, and press and hold. Just because it's liquid at this point and it can kind of pop itself back out of there. Within a few seconds, it's solid. Next, we're going to put on the check valve. The check valve only allows water to flow one direction because we're lifting this water up, we don't want the water to come back down. So it has a little valve inside that prevents the water from going back down. This is held together with no hubs and stainless steel clamps. It lasts forever. It's very strong material, don't worry about that. So slide that on. And then using your handy dandy Black & Decker with a 5 16th inch nut driver, we're going to tighten up these no hubs. Just as tight as that drill can make it. We want to tighten up the other no hubs. We leave the top one loose because we're still bringing this up. Now we're ready to go ahead and install everything to this point. Um, we'll have another riser here at the top, if you can see that. We'll have another riser here at the top that will come up with a 90 and send it out of the basin. Okay, so we're going to set our sump basin down in here. We want to make sure that that nipple that we cut open is pointing into our trench. It's that simple. Next, we'll set the pump in here. We'll square this up a little bit. The pump sits squarely on the bottom. Remember how it's going to lift the water up. And then we're going to discharge back through here. And it's actually going to go across this concrete because they're not prepared to pay for us to cut that concrete. So we're going to discharge across the concrete right into that breezeway temporarily. So next we're going to use a two inch hole saw. And normally we come out through the side of the pit. But because they're doing this temporary discharge, we're going to bring it up and across the ground. So we're going to come right up through the lid. You can see the little knockouts. We're just going to pick one right here, and we're going to drill right through it. You'll notice that the knockout is also two inch because it's a perfect size for inch and a half pipe. Now we're going to be able to send that riser up through the lid and be able to discharge. Okay, so we plumbed a temporary discharge. Remember, normally we want to put this underground and it's going to it would be underground. We'd have to saw cut this concrete, which is what we'll do in the future. But the association here, remember, this is a condo. And so the association just doesn't have quite that much money. We temporarily plumbed it out and let it turn into the breezeway and we'll let it discharge across the breezeway. So we're installing putting down the four inch corrugated. This is solid pipe, and it actually begins clear up there at the downspout. We're gonna put a catch basin in, you know, one there, one here, one here, and another one to help pick up the surface water. You can see all the sidewalks that we had to tunnel. Remember I showed you how to do that. Real simple, pretty straightforward job. Something that you could do yourself, although, you know, there's lots of homeowners here. Uh, most of them are retired, so we're going ahead and installing all the system. So in addition to the downspout drains, 
We're all also adding some catch basins. And the catch basins are going to help to collect that surface water because you can see this is a courtyard and it's surrounded by four walls. So as water falls into this area, it has no place to go. These catch basins, we've got one there. On the other side of the sidewalk, we've got another one. We're going to put in two more basins along this line to help pick up the surface water that floods the courtyard when it rains. Okay, so basically we're backfilling. Remember how this system works is we've got catch basins. They're picking up surface water that floods the courtyard. We've got the downspout drains attached to the system. You can see here's a downspout drain and there's another one in the front corner. We're just backfilling. Those downspouts come down. They come through the line, another catch basin. Everything goes over to the sump pump. That's the heart. From that sump pump, the water's lifted up and sent out temporarily because remember this is a small association and it's fairly expensive to cut the concrete we also have to cut the road behind here for it to discharge permanently underground and they did not want to spend the extra six or eight thousand whatever that was to do so but for right now temporarily comes across and it just splashes down through the breezeway you can see the downspouts are already going that way and water does travel out through there uh, when it rains really hard. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.